Pre-order the official Fact Hunt book from Unbound.com today! No, seriously! Video games and TV shows have never been good bedfellows. Networks consider them a device that steals the television away from their precious audience. So why would they ever commission shows that promote them? And even when they reluctantly do, they're a shoddy bag of ignorance. Hosted by presenters with clearly no interest nor knowledge about games, alienating a potential gaming demographic in a desperate attempt to appeal to an audience that clearly isn't interested. And worst of all, this ultimately gives TVXX a false notion that no one wants to watch a gaming show. It's a vicious circle. However, back in the early 90s, the biggest publisher in the world at the time, Nintendo, could see this fallacy and commissioned a game show based on their biggest IP. But strangely, while their other live-action shows like the Super Mario Bros. Super Show and, to a lesser extent, King Cooper's Cool Cartoons remain in the walls of internet nostalgia, this show seems to be completely obliterated. So come with me as I unearth this forgotten piece of Nintendo's history. As I say, but hello you. I'm Guru Larry and I welcome you to a Fact Hunt special. Nintendo's long lost Super Mario Game Show. Originally airing on the children's channel throughout Europe, the Super Mario Challenge was essentially a TV adaptation of Colt's Nintendo 90 minute advert movie, The Wizard only less of a kiddies knockoff of Rayman, and 100% less Fred Savage. The show was presented by John Lenahan, whose namesake makes him sound like a beetle with a speech impediment. But John was in fact an American magician jobbing as a British kids game show host. Mr Lenahan also seems to be having an identity crisis throughout the show, as he calls himself by his real name, while also constantly referring to himself as Mario in the first person. You make this yourself? Yes. Well done here, well done. Looks just like me if I must say so myself. Despite looking more like a dishevelled Luigi. I'm sorry, I lost my head there for a second. Anyhow, a typical episode of the Super Mario Challenge always began with John, uh, Mario, meeting the contestants. For example, this episode we welcome Douglas from London. He likes drawing, making Super Mario comics, and has a pet rat, which John is disappointed that he didn't bring along. You didn't bring it? Yeah. No, all right, that's all right then. Okay. And secondly, we have Chris Stiff from Kidlington, who drew, um, traced a Mario badge to wear on the show. Chris wants to be a doctor or a Super Mario designer when he grows up, but with a name like Stiff, he was obviously destined for other careers in life. But the first round of Super Mario Challenge is a race to the end of the level. John tells the contestants they're playing Super Mario Brothers 1. We're playing Super Mario Brothers 1, this is World Level 4. Despite the fact it's quite clearly Super Mario 3. But Douglas manages to completely arse up the challenge by dying in the first 30 seconds. Keep going forward. Douglas just got killed. Douglas has just gotten killed. So Chris is awarded a giant polystyrene coin. It's probably oversized, so he can't try to use it wrangling a free Mars bar from the vending machine down the hall. But with that little upset over, the next segment of the show is Super Mario Tips, where Mr. Lenahan gives essential game-winning advice, such as how we can discover the holy grail of Super Mario 3. This is how to find a 10-coin block. Now, this may sound like blatant filler, which it is, but John promises us that but getting 10 coins is always worth your while. Which it isn't. I'm sorry, I lost my head there for a second. But we're now off to round two, the points round, where Chris and Douglas must get a high score as possible on the level with the, the dreaded micro Goomba blocks. John tells the contestants, we don't care how many gold coins you get, we don't care how many lives you lose, unless you lose all of them, of course. So you do care then, John. I think at this point we've established that Mr. Lenahan clearly never listens to himself in the show by now. I'm sorry, I lost my head there for a second. The match itself is pretty close, but Douglas loses once again thanks to his amazing tactic of pretending it's a speed round and jumping over enemies rather than on top of them. Great thinking there, Doug. 
Douglas begins to look tearful when his rival is awarded two giant polystyrene coins this time. But John tells him not to worry about this humiliating defeat. Listen, don't worry about it. So, with a score of three oversized coins to zero, can Douglas make a comeback before it's too late? <coughs> the final round of the show is a single level, where the players must get as many points and coins as possible, while also keeping as many lives as possible. The round takes place on the, the land of the giants, giants, according to John. However, Douglas feels that craning his neck back every time he jumps will get him to leap higher for some reason. Which he ultimately does, as he wins the round by the skin of his teeth. So, thanks to the show's nonsensical scoring system, Douglas is awarded three polystyrene coins for his victory, securing a sudden death tiebreaker. Unfortunately, Douglas' previous victory was a complete fluke, as he immediately loses the round after deciding to become friends with a piranha plant. He's right behind the bomber. Douglas is dying! That makes Chris the winner! Congratulations! Yeah! Thanks to Chris's superior ability in Chris just didn't die as much. He makes his way off to the semi-finals. Sadly, I don't know what happened to Chris afterwards, as no one ever recorded those episodes and uploaded them to YouTube 28 years later in the future. But I'm sure he's living a life of luxury, designing Super Marios in a mansion paid for with giant polystyrene coins. Good on ya, Chris! The Super Mario Challenge only ever lasted one season, most likely due to only three Super Mario games being available in the UK at the time of recording. In fact, Super Mario 3 wasn't even released until halfway through filming of the series, so the tiny number of games available only gave it limited scope. But the Super Mario Challenge was replaced the following year with Head to Head, presented by the ever-awesome Violet Berlin. Head to Head covered multiple Super Nintendo and Mega Drive games. It also had me on as a contestant, sporting a highly regrettable mullet. It was cool at the time! No, no, it was never cool. I apologise for that statement. As for John Lanahan, he stayed in the UK and continues his magic career to this day. John's probably best known nowadays for voicing the infamous talking toaster in Red Dwarf. Would anyone like any toast? <laughs> did, you, did you hear what I just said? Yes, but I thought you might have changed your mind in the meantime. You see, you see what he's like. But he was also the first ever person to be kicked out of the magic circle, after showing how a three card Monty scam works on an episode of BBC's How Do They Do That? I'm sorry, I lost my head there for a second. John still occasionally dresses up as Mario, but only when he feels lonely. If you fancy checking out episodes, there's a link in the description below. But for an incredibly cheesy early 90s video game game show, it's actually not too bad. For any nostalgic Nintendo fans out there, it's well worth wasting 10 minutes on, reliving an unknown piece of childhood. Hello you, thanks ever so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified. And be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon. But thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time. Ta-ra for now.